Some big name Alberta politicos are raising money for Christy Clark's British Columbia Liberals. For more on this somewhat odd alliance, we're joined by Sun News reporter Mike Blanchard in Calgary. Mike. Yes, David, these are strange times. Did you ever think you'd see conservatives raising money for liberals? Well, don't adjust your set because that's exactly what's happening, especially in conservative heartland of Alberta. Some heavy hitters uh, in this province, Murray Edwards and Rod Love, are encouraging the business community to cough up cash and donate to the BC Liberal Party. Now you have to ask, why would Albertans support a premier that has come out and uh, essentially would hold up projects uh, hostage like the Northern Gateway project? Well, I guess they see it as the lesser of two evils. You know, conservatives in Alberta are willing to support a free enterprise party. They're not willing to support the alternative, and that's Adrian Dix and the NDP. Now, Christy Clark, for her part, says it's not uncommon for political parties to raise money out of province. You might be surprised at the political stripes of politicians in British Columbia who go to Alberta and do fundraisers. It has happened um, in many elections across the province. Remember this. There are uh, uh, companies that are based in Toronto, that are based in Calgary, that are based all across the country that have a big investment in making sure that British Columbia succeeds. And it's not just Alberta business that's concerned about this. You know, many Albertans have vacation properties in, uh, you know, the, well, the interior of BC, the Okanagan especially. So they're worried about their investment. And a lot of Albertans were living in BC the last time the NDP came to power in the 1990s. They fled the province as the New Democrats were running the economy into the ground. David. All right, Mike Blanchard in uh, Calgary tonight. Now let's go north to Edmonton, where Sun Media columnist Lauren Gunter is standing by. And uh, Lauren, of course, we're focusing on Battleground BC for a national network news audience because we think BC's, uh, this BC election is an important one for the whole country. But clearly, Albertans have this thing on their mind. They're looking over the Rockies and wonder what the heck's going on. Sure. And, you know, Mike was quite right that the big single reason that there's a fundraiser being held in Calgary for B.C. liberals is that they are the more free market of the two alternatives in B.C. and uh, the more likely party to at some point eventually approve the Northern Gateway Pipeline. I mean, it is odd because through most of the last half of 2012, Christy Clark, the B.C. Premier, spent uh, her time beating up on Alberta, saying Alberta was greedy, that it needed to give B.C. more money, that, you know, it had five, she had five conditions, still does, for approving Northern Gateway and most of them uh, are, are quite onerous. But the big one, of course, is that B.C. wants more money. So uh, it is a little bit odd that way, but it's not uncommon for people from outside the province to come to Alberta looking for cash. I mean, the, for a long time after he became leader of the Saskatchewan Party, Brad Wall's biggest single fundraiser was in Calgary. I can't say that it isn't still. They still hold a premier's dinner in Calgary. There are so many people from Saskatchewan who've moved to Alberta over the years that, uh, that there's a huge base of interest in Saskatchewan in uh, the oil patch and in Calgary. A lot of oil patch companies do business in Saskatchewan. Uh, they, you know, now that Saskatchewan's booming, perhaps the, the, the Saskatchewan party has a more lucrative fundraiser in Saskatoon or Regina. But as I said, for years and years and years, the single biggest fundraiser that the Saskatchewan party did was in Calgary. And, and even back into the 1980s, during the National Energy Program, if you can believe it, at that time, the federal Liberal Party raised about $4 million a year, and one quarter of that amount, $1 million, came out of Alberta. So Alberta, you know, because it's got a prosperous economy and has had for many years now, uh, it's, it's, a, uh, it, it's a golden goose that's uh, ready to be squeezed a little bit by people from outside the province. And it just sort of underlines, I mean, obviously, pipeline politics, energy politics are at the, at the heart of this B.C.-Alberta relationship. But it does underscore uh, how, uh, how much Alberta depends on uh, some sort of cooperation, if you will, from that West mm -hmm. Coast partner to get all the stuff you grow in Alberta, the beef you get in Alberta, the wheat you get in Alberta, and, of course, all the energy products. they got to get to those customers in Asia, and B.C. standing in the way. 
Yeah, I mean, BC is not standing in the way on beef or wheat or anything else. They just seem to be reluctant to uh, to allow a pipeline across the, the province to a port at Kitimat that uh, would then allow us to ship uh, our oil overseas to uh, Asian markets. Uh, and, and, you know, I, I understand some of their reservations. Ultimately, I think what's going to happen is constitutionally they're not going to have too much of a leg to stand on. They're going to end up having the pipeline if it's approved by the National Energy Board. Uh, but, yes, I mean, it... it, it, it it's also very useful for Alberta businesses to, to have a pro-business government in BC because there's so much inter-trade between the two provinces. And as, as Mike pointed out in the introduction to this, uh, there are an awful lot of Albertans who own property in BC and they know what happened the last time the NDP came in. There were, for instance, huge new taxes on, uh, on land transfers, which pushed down the price of land. There were enormous regulations brought in, very onerous regulations brought in that essentially shut down lumbering on public lands in BC. Now that drove an awful lot of timbermen to Alberta to, to uh, start work here, look for logs here to feed their mills back in BC. But if you're invested in, an, in a BC lumber firm and you're an Albertan and suddenly then a new NDP government comes in and again shuts down the forests, then you're out some money. So, it, it, you know, there's an awful lot of interconnectivity between Alberta and B.C.'s economy, and this fundraiser in Calgary is just more evidence of that. The influence of money in Canadian politics, of course, is nothing like we saw in the United States during the pr primaries, et cetera, where, you know, millionaires are sending literally million-dollar checks to candidates. That mm -hmm. said, um, if Christy Clark wins, and if there's a good chunk of money that helps her campaign win that came from Alberta, I want her to be in the back of her head where she may look on uh, the the pipeline politics issue a little more favorably and treat Alberta's interests a little more favorably. Well, I mean, I'm sure that that's one of the hopes of the people who are behind this uh, fundraiser in Calgary. It's, too, it's a little interesting. This is sort of an inside baseball kind of, of fact. But it's also interesting that the people who are behind this fundraiser in Calgary are not necessarily behind Alison Redford, the Alberta Tory Premier. So these are Tories, but they're not necessarily Redford Tories. So, you know, there's, there's, some, uh, there's some disconnect there between the fundraisers and the, and the party establishment in, in Alberta. So uh, these people are basically freelancing. They think that it's, it's useful to Alberta investors to have a business-friendly government in power in Victoria. And so uh, they're doing what they can to help Christy Clark out. Lauren Gunter in Edmonton tonight. Uh, thank you so much, Lauren. Appreciate it. You bet, David.